welcome to News Weekend, a quick roundup of Catholic news from around the region. On the 4th of October, Pope Francis presided at the Holy Mass in St. Peter's Square for the opening of the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops. He invited the faithful to walk with the Holy Spirit in trust and with joy. Members of the public gathered with bishops, cardinals and participants of the Synod to inaugurate its opening. St. Peter's Square was filled with some 25,000 pilgrims. The Synod has not been immune to controversy. A few days before the Synod, five conservative cardinals wrote a public letter to the Pope asking him to clarify whether the Synod would change Catholic doctrine on subjects like female priesthood or the blessing of LGBT couples. In his homily, Pope Francis called for a change in mentality for the purpose of the Synod. E non ci serve uno sguardo immanente fatto di strategie umane, calcoli politici o battaglie ideologiche, che se il Sinodo darà questo permesso dell'altro, aprirà questa porta, l'altro, questo non serve. Non, non siamo qui per portare avanti una riunione parlamentare o un piano di riforme. Il Sinodo, cari fratelli e sorelle, non è un Parlamento. protagonista è lo Spirito Santo. No, non siamo qui per fare Parlamento. Siamo per camminare insieme con lo sguardo di Gesù. Pope Francis insisted that this assembly should be held in a less political and more spiritual sense. Se il popolo santo di Dio con i suoi pastori da ogni parte del mondo nutre attese, speranze e pure qualche paura sul sinodo che iniziamo, ricordiamo ancora che esso non è un raduno politico, non è un Parlamento, è una convocazione nello Spirito. Pope Francis said that God should be placed at the center, not the discussions of supporters of one ideology or the other. Fratelli e sorelle, popolo santo di Dio, dinanzi alle difficoltà e alle sfide che ci attendono, lo sguardo benedicente e accogliente di Gesù ci impedisce di cadere in alcune tentazioni pericolose, di essere una chiesa rigida, una dogana, che si arma contro il mondo e guarda all'indietro, di essere una chiesa tiepida, che si arrende alle mode del mondo, di essere una chiesa stanca, ripiegata su se stessa. The Pope also made a reference to St. Francis of Assisi on his feast day. The Pope chose St. Francis as his namesake because he was a saint of poverty and peace. India joins Ranchi Archdiocese in mourning the passing away of Cardinal Telesfo Topo. Cardinal Telesfo of Ranchi was the first tribal cardinal from Asia. Pope John Paul II consecrated him a cardinal in the year 2003. Cardinal Telesfo died on the 4th of October. He was 84. He was born on the 15th of October, 1939, in Jhalgaon, a small isolated village in Chanpur, Gumla district. He served as an archbishop in Ranchi for 35 years. With his death, the Church in India bids farewell to a dedicated figure of the poor, an educationist who balanced progress and education, and a philosopher who reached out to people from all walks of life. The funeral mass is fixed on Wednesday, 11th October at 1 p.m. at Loyola Ground in Ranchi, which is close to the Archbishop's house. The Cardinal will be buried in St. Mary's Cathedral, Ranchi. You are watching News Weekend. Catholic news events from near and far away. The small but significant Anglo Indian community in Patna helped 70 low income and destitute families with sacks full of provisions on October 2nd. 
See, basically today is the joy of giving, this whole week, joy of giving and today is Gandhi Jayanti. So we thought of, uh, it couldn't be a better day to give something back to society. They raised most of the 70,000 rupee budget through an old newspaper collection drive. Anglo Indians, they have got a very, very large heart. They are large hearted. And they do things in strength. They got enormous heart, big heart. It doesn't matter how much money they personally have in their own pockets, but they'll always step forward and they'll get the resources. They're very talented in getting the resources and to reach out to people, the poor and the needy. So this program was designed to help out the poor. The Danapur branch of the All India Anglo-Indian Association and Don Bosco Academy came together to celebrate the joy of giving beat as well as the birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. It was an event that touched the hearts of many. The Eastern Rite, Siro Malabar Church, Idukki Diocese, suspended 75-year-old Father Kuryakos Mattam on the 2nd of October. The priest had joined the local unit of Bharatiya Janata Party (BJP). Catholic priests are not allowed to join any political party. The priest has been shifted to the diocesan home for elderly priests. You are watching News Weekend. Catholic news events from near and far away. The Church in India has initiated preparations for Jubilee 2025, aligning with the Universal Church's efforts with the release of the 35 Council Notebooks. On 4 October, the government raided and arrested a number of journalists, editors, writers, and professionals. These journalists are seen as those who raise grassroots issues that at times embarrass the ruling party. The Federation of Catholic Associations of the Archdiocese of Delhi, FCAD, condemned the raids on the journalists. In many places across India, citizens' groups are protesting against the arrests of the journalists. The raids, conducted under Sections 153A, promoting enmity between two groups, and 120B, criminal conspiracy, and of the sweeping anti-terror unlawful activities, Prevention Act, UAPA, took place in more than 30 locations, in Delhi, Mumbai and Hyderabad. That's all for this week. Come back next week, for another compilation of, Catholic News.